Well, we're just a small group here, but um, I think uh, maybe we may wish to get started just with the introductions and a little bit about CDKN, um, because then maybe some other people might uh, hop on board as we get going. And, and we need to make enough time for gameplay and discussion at the end. So why don't we get going and hope that others join. I'm uh, Mary Dupar and I'm a technical advisor for the Climate and Development Knowledge Network. You have joined here the um, inclusivity training se session of CBA 15. And I'm very pleased to introduce my uh, collaborators, uh, Patty Velasco and uh, Nona Lely, uh, who are going to say a quick hello from, from their side. Over to you. Hi, everyone. I hope you are fine. I am Patricia Velasco, and I used to work in FLA and with CDKN as well. And now I'm still working with FLA as a consultant. So let's play and have a lot of fun today. Hi, everyone. My name is Nonele Mlobeli. I am joining from Cape Town. I'm also um, part of the CDKN team. I'm a project administrator. So I'll be the person on the background of Zoom. And yeah, looking forward to playing the games. Thanks a lot, guys. Let's uh, advance to the next slide and I'll tell you about today's agenda. So uh, we just said hi to each other, which is great. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about CDKN and all about the climate and society role play game, um, why and how it was developed and piloted. Um, that's the interactive game we're going to be playing today. Uh, then we're going to play the game together um, with uh, various of us being in character. And then we're going to have a group reflection on what issues we pinpointed about climate risk and adaptation for different groups of people based on the game. And then we're going to have a further reflection on the use of the game as a pedagogical tool. How did it work as a, a training or educational exercise? Uh, go ahead to the next slide, Nona Lely, please. So first about CDKN, we've been going since 2010 and we are a knowledge network across the world. Um, we are headquartered in Cape Town, South Africa at the NGO South South North. Um, that's where the global offices are. Um, I myself am based at ODI in London. The uh, major activity is happening out of the regional offices um, at South South North, also at ECLE South Asia, which is the regional hub um, for South Asia, and at FLA, or uh, Fundacion Futuro Latinoamericano, uh, based in Ecuador. And we've got um, the focal countries that you can see on the, on the map, um, Nepal, Bangladesh, and India in South Asia, Ethiopia, Kenya, Ghana, and Namibia as our focal countries countries in Africa and the Andean countries of Peru, um, Ecuador and Colombia in Latin America. Next slide, please. So our overall mission is to enhance the quality of life for the poorest and most vulnerable to climate change. And we support decision makers to design and deliver climate compatible development. Next, please. In the current phase of CDKN, it's called the Knowledge Accelerator, we're particularly focused on linking knowledge uh, together with action on climate change. And this takes the form of tailoring the wealth of knowledge on climate change to match developing country needs, support collaboration and learning, and to empower climate leaders and champions. And there is um, quite a focus on peer-to-peer -peer learning, which you'll see come out in the game today in the way it's um, designed. Designed. Now, the learning objective of the climate and society game that we're going to dive into today is for participants to understand more about women's and girls and um, socially marginalized groups' perspectives and needs in the context of climate resilient development and climate related disaster risk reduction by uh, walking in other people's shoes. And it's really designed as a tool 
to help participants start to explore operational solutions for different groups of people. Um, so the game really intends to get people thinking and talking about intersectionality, um, how not just gender, but a combination of people's social economic status and social cultural characteristics and preferences affect the way they're exposed to climate hazards, their vulnerability and their capacity to make positive changes. And we do put quite a strong emphasis on this last point, not just talking about people as victims, but all the kinds of knowledge and capabilities and skills and talents that they can bring if their potential is unleashed to the task of climate change adaptation and resilient development. Next please. So how the game could help in a sort of climate action context, it uses interactive role play methods to encourage participants to think differently. This lady in the picture is upside down. It, it encourages people to change their perspective in some way, um, to cultivate a deeper understanding of social differences and needs in a climate change context. Um, now, I really want to um, make it very clear that we don't propose that role play could be a substitute, any kind of substitute for hearing directly from different types of affected stakeholders about their needs and concerns. That's definitely not our intention. It's only one exercise in a diverse toolkit of training approaches. And we see it as an entry point, not an end point for discussion about um, different people's uh, characteristics and priorities and uh, what they can get out of climate change adaptation. So you have to understand the training tool of this game that we're going to be introducing today is something that we see as being used alongside direct engagement with climate affected people, definitely, um, in, including in a training context itself. Um, testimonials from uh, climate affected people from different uh, perspectives and backgrounds, including in an online uh, tra training context, it could be, um, you know, video testimonials, if it's not a more interactive form of engagement, and indeed other forms of educational tools. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to do a short advertisement, uh, in fact, um, for the point that this game, this interactive game, is part of a bigger training and development pack that CDKN has created that has got several modules um, which are intended to support project managers through an entire climate project cycle. Um, and sorry if the font is a bit small and you, you can't um, read all of those words in the diagram, but basically, you know, goes from the uh, understanding people people's needs um, and climate vulnerability assessment um, through uh, project, project design and development and budgeting, monitoring, evaluation and learning and so forth. In fact, if you go to the next slide, please. Thanks. Um, these are the six modules uh, titles which, which you can find um, on this, the CDKN website. And these are in the form of uh, PowerPoint uh, packs for each module um, on each of these different topics, um, which you're absolutely free to download and um, tailor and adapt and use as you would like in your own uh, context um, for your own um, sort of training needs with the people you work with. So, so please do, um, as it were, help yourselves to these resources. And we'd just be um, very grateful if you would attribute anything that you use uh, from CDK and attribute it to us. And if possible, uh, you know, get in touch to let us know how, how you've used it. Um, but uh, that, that's just to say that um, today's session is part of a, a bigger picture, a bigger set of resources that we've developed. Thanks. Go ahead to the next slide. Um, 
so some context about um, the role play game. Uh, FLA, uh, Patty's former organisation, has used the methodology in its gender trainings for a long time um, and have got lots of field experience in this methodology. Um, this latest modification of this method um, and its expansion into the climate and society game under CDKN auspices um, has been underway since last, uh, sorry, almost two years ago. And it's intended to explore climate risk and resilience issues even more. Now, it was first created uh, just before the pandemic hit and uh, intended for face-to-face -face use in workshops. Um, so well, we have had a face-to-face -face outing um, with sort of COVID hygiene measures in place in Ethiopia in December 2020. Um, but unfortunately, um, all the other sort of uh, true pilots of the game have had to happen digitally in the online environment, which is not really what we intended. But the good news is that it seems to um, sort of work. It seems to be usable online. Um, but you can be the judge of that and, and, and you, you can see what you, you think about it. Um, so just to say it's been a bit of an experiment. Next slide, please. Now, the game comes in three versions. Um, today's version we're going to use is the South America version. Um, there is also uh, available on our uh, CDKEN website an India version, which I think, um, Anupama, you said you were dialing in from Nepal. Um, hopefully it would be suitable enough for uh, Nepalese use as well, because it's, it's got quite a lot of um, sort of similarities. It, it was designed um, so that it could also be used in Nepal. So hopefully that will be useful to you. Um, there's an Ethiopia version um, and the, the character Hannah uh, below is from, from the Ethiopia pack, which is very specific to um, Ethiopian circumstances. And in fact, we're currently involved in uh, developing one which would be um, perhaps more suitable um, for sort of other locations in East Africa. Um, and it's not quite so um, specific to Ethiopia, but you will find the links. We've got a big banner at the top of the CDKN homepage about our gender games, and you can navigate to all the different regional and country versions from there. Thanks, you go ahead to the next, the next slide. So how the game works is as follows, and I'm just going to give you an overview and then Patty's going to take you into the real thing. So um, players are introduced into a fictional scenario and the Latin American one we're going to use today is called, well it means of course flooded neighbourhood, Barrio Inundado, uh, a low income neighbourhood in a coastal city of South America suffering increasingly from coastal and inland flooding. Climate change has brought sea level rise and more frequent storm surges um, including high waves, that inundate settlements, businesses and infrastructure. So um, there's a scenario uh, where everybody um, playing the game is going to sort of situate themselves mentally. Go ahead to the next slide, please. And then there are a handful of characters um, for each of the fictional scenarios, and they all have a mix of different ages, genders, socioeconomic status, religions, health issues, sexual orientation, um, education levels, literacy levels, and so forth. Um, so they're diverse, just like real life is. And each character has many existing capabilities um, to help them adapt to climate change, um, including extreme weather events. Um, but they also have these kind of socially conditioned roles and characteristics. Um, which have to do with um, certain fears and insecurities about how people view them and treat them, which in many cases are, um, are, are quite real and, and tangibly felt. And, uh, and that's in contrast with some of the inherent characteristics like physical abilities, um, which also vary, and, and also as well as the socially conditioned ones, affects their climate vulnerability and risk. And we'll come back to this, this rather lovely lady here, Sophia, the, the rural migrant of the third age, because she's one of our Latin American characters who we're going to meet in the game in a minute. Next slide, please. 
So next, um, a trained facilitator, and today it's going to be Patty, takes the role of the climate change officer in this scenario. And there are actually two rounds of gameplay. We're only going to have time to play the first round today because it, it takes sort of half a day to do the whole thing. <laughs> it, it, it's quite a long game. We'll just do round one today. And the game starts when everybody reads the scenario together and they get given a character. Um, and, and we'll we'll decide when we go into the into the um, the mural board and to to look at the characters in more depth, like who's going to take which character, um, and then the facilitator, the Maria um, climate change officer character, she goes around and and she and like play acting, um, you know, has an interaction with each of those characters in turn, and they talk about their specific circumstances. Next slide, please. Um, so the scenario here, what we're going to do in a minute is that we're going to get into character and we're going to have a conversation in character. And um, the scenario that we're going to walk into is that Maria, the climate change officer, has tried to gather together people in the fictional neighbourhood for a meeting to talk about um, the climate hazard. And here, um, that we chose flooding as, as being the, the, the fictional climate hazard that would um, be harming this neighbourhood. But um, in the story, nobody came to Maria's meeting. She was disappointed. So she knocks on each person's door, the door of each character, and each character talks initially about the challenges they've had. Why didn't they take part in the project? Why didn't they come to the meeting? And how does the flooding affect them? They have a conversation about that and then they, uh, they're they talking mostly then about their vulnerabilities and their risks and the sort of challenges that they face. But then they take a positive spin on it, how to make their situation better, how to include them in climate change adaptation with a focus really on their capabilities and their talents and also how you can build up social capital and collective action among different types of people. Next slide, please. After we've played this for a bit, um, then how it goes is that people sort of step out of character and you are yourself again and you get a chance to have a group discussion and reflect on the experience. Talk a bit about um, did the game, uh, your thought process, some of the prompts that you read about on the gameplay cards, did they teach you something about climate risk for different people that you didn't consider before? Did it make you think about some aspect of climate risk or people's vulnerability and their capacities and talents that you didn't consider? And did you get any new ideas about how to approach climate change adaptation and practice? Um, so that can be one of the richest um, parts is when you kind of step back out of that um, changed perspective, you become yourself again and you think, what am I going to do with this? So that's basically how it goes. Um, we're going to go ahead and play now. I think it's time to hop into the, the mural. Oh, this was just a note, sorry, just to say that um, Patty's an experienced facilitator and she's done this before, but uh, we also have a facilitator's guidance sheet. So if you fancy um, playing this yourself, using these resources with other groups of people, we can share the facilitator's tips with you in a Word document. Um, and that could give you some prompts. But I'm also hoping that as you play the game with us today, you'll come up with various insights that will help us to beef up our facilitator's um, tip sheet as well. So we look forward to doing that. Okay, shall we go ahead and play? Um, we've put the mural uh, link into the chat box. Can everyone see it? Yeah. And then uh, without further ado, I'm going to share my screen. And, um, and then we can all look at it together. Over to you, Patty. Will I try and get the screen share going? Yes, yes. Thank you, Miley, for the introduction. And thank you for seeing me like a super facilitator. I am learning as well. So we are playing together. And since we are no, not too many people, I think each one can have a, a character. So
So let me let me give uh, until we until Mary can share the screen. Maybe give like um, uh, each character to to everybody here. So maybe uh, Lucia. Uh, uh, let me see the name. Sorry, I cannot see the names. Amy, Amy Martin, Martins. Uh, can you be Lucia? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anupana Sharma. Sorry if I don't pronounce uh, correctly your names. <laughs> Anu Anupana, can you be Roberto? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, can you be Adelina? I can try to. I'm just doing a lot of multitasking with making dinner for my kids. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's okay. We can try it. I'm like a silent <laughs> participant. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, uh, Beteki, is correct your name? Can you be Juan Carlos? Uh, Mayri, can you be Sofia? And maybe also I can ask uh, Noneleli to join and be Miguel. Okay, let me try. <laughs> Sorry, I, I know that you also are multitasking. So we'll see. We'll see. So I think all of you have the, the screen of the mural. And uh, let's start. I know that for, for, for most of us it's late. So first start closing your, your eyes. Have a deep breath and be immersed in, in this scenario. Um, this scenario uh, is Barrio Inundado. Barrio Inundado is a low-income neighborhood in a coastal city of South America. It suffers increasingly from both coastal and island flooding. Climate change has brought sea levels rise and more frequent storm surge, uh, high waves, that inundate settlements, business, and free structure. Climate change has also brought heavier rainfall. This makes the river running through the city, and in bands, washing dirty work, and waste into the streets. Flooding has forced people to evacuate several times. Something must be done to make the residents less more bearable. Um, let me introduce uh, myself as well. So I'm, I'm Maria, and I am the climate officer from the municipality of the Barrio Inondado. And uh, my job is to uh, make a vulnerability assessment of Barrio Inondado. And I really, really want to have all the perspective of the community. So let's now um, have five minutes that you be immersed in your character. So I would like to invite you to read each character. You can read uh, both, both parts, like the back and the front. So you can see here, uh, Lucia, Roberto, Adelina. So you have the back in the top, uh, the front in the top and the back uh, in the top, in the bottom. So let's see, I'm going to put my timer five minutes. Uh, and you can imagine <laughs> to be in the shoes of these on, on these characters. Hi Anupama, I think you dropped out. Uh, we're just still reading the cards together on the mural before the conversation starts. Yeah, I just lost my connection, so sorry. <laughs> no worries, no worries. <laughs> There are some information in the back card, but you also can add some, some of your ideas and thoughts about the character.
So one minute left. Are you ready? Okay, <laughs> so let me start. Um, as you know me, I'm Maria. Um, I finished my master's degree in environmental studies uh, two years ago. In an hour work in the municipality, and as I said, I need to do a vulnerability and risk, a climate risk assessment. And I have tried very hard to have meetings with everybody, but um, barely um, no one came up on, the, on this meeting. So now I'm knock the doors. And um, I will start with, um, with Sophia because she reminds me a lot to my grandmother. So I will see. I will see um, Sophia. Tuk tuk, Bring. Dear, how are you? How are you, Sophia? How are you doing? Yeah. Oh, okay. A few aches and pains. What's new? <laughs> but you Hot day, isn't you it? You look very young. How are you doing? I haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, you know, I just don't get around the way I used to. It's my leg. It's kind of troubling me. But, you know, hey, I'm 21 years at heart, right? <laughs> Sophia, Sophia, I'm, I'm trying to finish my race, uh, uh, climate risk analysis, and I haven't seen you in oh, the meetings. What? 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 Sorry, stop right there. Ah, I don't oh, understand okay. those yeah, big, long sorry, words. Sophia, yeah. Sophia. Sorry. Um, do you know that there are a lot of flooding lately in the in the neighborhood? So yes. I'm trying oh my to gosh, understand yes. uh, the effects of this flooding uh, in all the community. And mm. I was trying to do these meetings, but uh, nobody came to the last two mini, uh, meetings. So I'm here now to hear you and to know what happened in your in your home uh, when this, these floodings uh, happened. Tell me, tell me what happened and why you didn't uh, uh, attend to the last meeting. Oh, thank you so much for coming to speak to me. You know, I'm so grateful because I just like love speaking with people in the community, but it's just a problem that I can't get around that easily anymore. Um, so I'm really happy for your time. Yeah, you know, the flood... I didn't realize it was going to be such an issue here in this neighborhood when I moved from the countryside. It washes the sewage from the big open channels through the streets. It's disgusting. It comes into my house. It makes it dirty. I mean, of course, you know, I try to put up a little piece of wood. You see, I have this one here. I try to move it to keep the water out, but still it comes rushing in. Ah, when I moved here, I came because my relatives are here. They work here and they support me. But to be honest, Maria, they're away at the job all day and I'm all by myself. And well, you know, it's stressful. It's stressful yes, for me. Yes, yes. I'm sorry to hear that. I didn't know that you you have these pains. Are, are, you are very, very happy to share your experience, but also to share like some ideas how to deal with these uh, floodings. So I will take in, uh, on care about your your comments. How 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 um, how I can do so you can participate more in the meetings and, and with ideas. How 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 I can manage uh, the time or, or can I find somebody to help you uh, 
uh, to go to the meetings. Uh, how, oh, how... that would be lovely. Oh, a friend to help me. That would be so nice. And you know, when you get a little bit older like me, the temperature affects you. Oh, don't call something for the heat of the day, Maria. I just need to be in my house relaxing and being as cool as possible. But if you call me out in the morning or, you know, towards the late afternoon when it's not so hot, I can tolerate it. And if I have someone just to help me make sure that, you know, I can get there safely, I, I am safe in myself you know, I can get over the uneven pavements and so forth. That's okay. I, hey, look at the wisdom of, you know, a lady like me. I'm ready to share it. I love a good talk with my neighbors. It just has to be convenient. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sophia. I'm sure that the, the neighbors are going to listen to you. You have all the experience and you are our, our um, grandmother. <laughs> So I'm, 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 I know that you are going to help us. But let me ask something about, uh, about your family, because as you say, you made a decision to move into this uh, neighborhood. But uh, if you don't see your family so, so often, um, what do you do when the flooding uh, happens? It's a matter of luck, Maria. You know, they're sweet. They come to me for the Sunday dinner. We love it. We sit together. All of Sunday, we're together. It's so special. We go to mass together, even in the church. But you know, what if it's, the flood comes Monday to Friday? God Almighty, he doesn't plan the flood for Sunday when my relatives are there looking after me. So mm -hmm. it's the luck. What's to happen if it comes when they're not there? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Sophia, for sharing. Maybe we can we can see some uh, volunteers that can help you when when your relatives are not uh, here, as you say. So let's see, let's see. I think you have a uh, great ideas, and and now I understand better your situation. So I will think more uh, about the times and how is the how is the room, and and, and see if I can have. I can organize some volunteers to help you. Oh, um, thank you so much. Can I tell you one other thing? Yes, Maria. Sophia. I love babies. Oh, I miss having the tickle the little toes. If there's any, you know, need for babysitting, call on me. That's a great idea, Sophia, because there are a lot of families with, with kids and we have a meeting and uh, maybe you can have a role there, like oh, uh, yes, please. If, if some are participating, you can see the babies, but also take turns with other uh, moms or, or grandparents. It's a oh, great yes. idea, that Sophia. Sophia, oh, yes. I'm running late. I am okay. knocking every door in the neighborhood because I need to okay. see all the needs. Uh, but thank you very much for the time. You are always very kind uh, with me. So. So um, I will um, inform you if, if I have any new or we have another meeting. Thank you very okay, much. Sophia. Thank you. Bye, my dear. Bye bye. Wow. Yes, I love the conversation with Sophia. And um, now I see uh, Juan Carlos. I think he he just arrived from the school. Maybe I can knock the door. <clears throat> talk talk. Hello, Maria. Hi, Juan Carlos. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I saw that you just arrived from the school. Yes, I'm very busy. I have a lot of homework. So I immediately started homework because I also have a lot of work to do to support my aunt because she is quite old and she is also, also physically disabled. So I have to do all the work in the home as well. Don't worry, Juan Carlos, I only need five minutes of your time. And um, I don't remember, how old are you, Juan Carlos? I'm 16 years old. Oh, nice, nice, nice. And your, are your aunt, how old is, is she? She is 62, not that old, but the problem is that since since she is 55, she is physically disabled because she has a um, multiple multiple sclerosis. So she is not 
she can mm -hmm. work anymore. Okay, okay. Juan Carlos, uh, have you noticed that uh, and over the time we have a lot of floodings in our neighborhood? So I'm trying to understand what what are the effects uh, of the of the floodings in in every in every home. So can you tell me more uh, what happened when the when the the flooding happens on on, on your home? Uh, what are the problems that you have? Uh, uh, the problems with uh, with with your aunt as well? Yeah, so it's very scary because the floodings are coming nearer and nearer. Uh, we didn't face a direct problem into our home, but I'm very afraid that, well, we, maybe the next floodings or in some months we really will, will get uh, affected as well. So I'm very, I'm very scared and I don't know what to do because we cannot move from here. So I feel like that we are kind of stuck and there is no support also for the situation of my aunts as a disabled old lady. So I really do not know what to do. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, Juan Carlos. And may I ask, ask you, um, because you know all the situation and, and maybe you have the good ideas uh, because you are young and very innovative. Um, why you didn't... Um, come to the last meeting and because I, I I have been trying very hard to have everybody together but I could I could yeah, not so, do it so it's it's my study of course but also because of the situation of my aunt I can't leave her alone for a long time so if I come from school I I always go home so I cannot afford mm -hmm. um, uh, going to a meeting yeah yeah I understand you you have a lot of responsibilities, um, but maybe maybe I can think um, uh, any way um, to to improve your situation. Uh, what will uh, help you to to improve this situation and go to the meetings and and help us to deal with the floodings? Well, if if, if we can think of a kind of support for my aunts, maybe um, a wheelchair so that, that she can move here and there. Um, then, oh, I'm sorry. There is a dog. Uh, it's okay. But, uh, <laughs> so so if, if uh, there, there comes a kind of uh, support for my aunts, then, then I, I, I am more free to not only go to meetings, but also help the neighborhoods. Uh, thank you, Juan Carlos. I think it's a great idea and you gave me like uh, more information about that. I'm sure I will try to, to have these facilities for the next time, like a wheelchair, but also maybe a group of volunteers to help your aunt. And also taking advantage that I know that you are going to study uh, law on the university. Maybe yes. you have you can you can start to to think uh, to check some uh, policies or, or to yes of course to have I can some, do that I can yeah, help with that yeah and, and have some uh, like uh, informal uh, classes with your your yes your friends yes. at the school yeah and and see how we can how we can lobby with the local governments of our neighborhood to yeah. see if they can can provide more support. Thank you. Thank you, Juan Carlos, for your time. Uh, please You're say welcome. hello to your aunt, and I will see the next meeting with all these uh, good ideas that you have. Thank you very much. Oh, and Juan Carlos gave me a lot of ideas uh, about uh, this vulnerability group, uh, the, the disabled people. Um, mm, let me see, maybe I can go uh, to Miguel because yeah, it's a little bit late, so maybe he also probably arrived from his job. Uh, Coming. Coming. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, Miguel. How are you doing? How is your family? Oh, it's been a long day, you know. Uh, working nine to nine, trying to make a living here. Yeah, it's just those days where you just feel like 
you want to be hopeless, but you keep on trying. How are you? Yeah, and thank you, Miguel, for receiving me. As you notice, we have we have had a lot of floodings uh, lately, and I have been trying to have these meetings uh, with all the neighborhood. And I know that you participated in the in the last meeting that in the in the previous meeting, but uh, from the last one, you didn't appear. So I wanted to check with you because you are always very enthusiastic and. I wanted to check you uh, why you didn't come to this uh, the last meeting. You know, it's not easy being the only um, person in the house. You know, I'm trying to 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 gather my strength and try to to uplift my life. You know, having a wife who's at home all the time, raising a child, thinking about university and studies and fees. You know, everything that just needs money. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I have to say this, um, I didn't, I was not aware of the meeting. I mean, for people like us who work nine to nine, sometimes nine to 12, it's hard to hear these conversations within people, you know, maybe if it was on social media, hashtag meeting or something like that, maybe we would have been able to pick it up because some of us really rely on social media for such things. So unfortunately, this one missed me. Good, Miguel. Yes, I remember, I remember that you are like an IT professional. So maybe, so maybe we, we can use all your skills uh, to inform more people about these, um, these floodings and the consequence. But let me, let me ask one question. And, and how, how has the flooding affected you and what will improve uh, your situation uh, to deal or to address these floodings? Especially because I know that you are uh, every day in the office, but your family is staying uh, at home. It's, it's, it's getting really bad, you know, because um, I think having someone who is at home who really needs to, to use everything that's in the house, you know, from electricity, water supply and stuff. Now, this um, flooding, it's, it, 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 it was not as much as I thought we would learn about. And I think we were just not prepared for it, you know, I mean, for people like us who, 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 who are tech savvy and who use computers and stuff, you know, we need, even if we're working from home, we need computers to operate with, you know, and when we don't have um, things like electricity, you know, it's very hard. It's hard, it's hard for even getting connection to the internet. So it's, it's, it's really hard. And for people like us who've got aspirations of moving places, you know, going to other places because we're still young and we're still trying to make a living. It's, it's really affecting, you know, when you talk about things like the market, how you can, you can sell your house. How, so this whole thing is affecting, you know, I was even thinking of moving with my wife, you know, trying oh. to, 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 to find a better living and stuff. And this now has, has, has had a setback on me because even the, the value of my flat is going to go down because there's a lot of things that need to be done, renovations and stuff. So it's, it's actually affecting me in a way that I did not know think it would cause I thought you know I just paid everything you know I'm this person who's fresh ready to move and now I have to spend a lot of money that I don't have take saving for my son and so it's just been like that that's that's the whole situation mm -hmm. currently mm -hmm. oh Miguel Miguel and I, I think probably all the community um, are going to miss you and your family I hope uh, until you sell your house, uh, we can you, you can help us um, and, and to provide this this knowledge that you have with the social media and also maybe your family, your wife and your kids also can be volunteers uh, to help others in the community. Um, I'm glad that you are trying to move, but also I'm I'm, I'm very sad because we are not going to have you in the in the meetings. Um, yeah. Definitely. I'm going to come with my wife because she's the one who's at home who understands what issues she's facing. You know, she understands everything that happens at home. She's actually the person who is the head of the house because she deals with everything. I just 
listen to whatever she says I need to do and that's it so I'm definitely going to come I'm even going to bring my son there because they need to learn these um, issues that the society is facing so you can put my name on that list I'm definitely coming thank to you it. thank you Miguel it's going to be very useful and I, I will uh, try to have more information and maybe you can uh, help me to translate in a different ways with your IT skills Thank you, Miguel. Uh, see you in the next meeting. Bye. Ooh, um, we'll see. We'll see if, if, if Adelina is here. Um, she told me on the chat that she is very busy and multitasking now. So if if, if she's not what? here, she's, uh, she's, she's here. here. She's, she's, you guys, uh, yeah, this is very live. Live, Hi. Adelina. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Adelina. I know that you are very busy. I'm very busy. And, and normally I cannot speak with you. So taking advantage that you have a little bit of time. Um, can you tell me um, why why didn't um, come to the last meeting? Well, you know, I I'm very, very, very busy. I have three children who are very young. And I have to do a lot of housework and it's very difficult to, to leave, to leave the house. And I have someone and I have three children always needing my attention. And yeah, I can they, hear, I can hear, uh, I can hear your kids. <laughs> very busy. <laughs> yeah, don't worry, don't worry. And what happened in, in now? And what happened with your husband? Do you... Do you have some help from him or, or, or you are alone? What happened? Uh, he husband? doesn't help much. He likes to he likes to watch a lot of television. Um, and he, <laughs> he he likes to go out with his friends a lot and he's just not around a lot. Um, uh, so it's quite difficult. It's quite difficult to 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 manage everything on my own. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, sorry to hear that, but maybe. Maybe for the next meeting we can find some support for the from the volunteers on, on any support from from any other neighborhood. And let me let me ask some questions because I'm doing this uh, climate risk analysis. I would like to know uh, how the flooding affects you and your family. Well, you know, when the flooding comes, it just it just it just um, inundates my house completely. It makes everything so stinky and I have so much to clean up when, when I have to recover from, from a flooding event. And it's, it's really, really tricky to try and keep the household running and the, the, the school clothes get wet. And, I, and, I, and I, I have to send the children without any school clothes to school. They have to wear their normal clothes. <laughs> And um, yeah, it's just very, very difficult to do when, when the flooding arrives. Okay, yeah, I guess it's, it's, it's the same for, for most of the, the neighbors. Um, let, me, let me ask a last question because I know that you are busy and I don't want to take a lot of time with you. Um, let, me, let me ask how, how I can help, how I can create like a good environment uh, and you can assist for the next uh, meeting because I, your, your knowledge and your information is very valuable for me. So I would like to ensure that you are going to be in the next meeting. How, how I can do this? I think maybe if we do the meeting at, at certain times in the evening, it's very difficult for me to do the meetings, but in the mornings when the children are at school, it's always a good time. So those times are better. And then it's easier for me to get away from the house. And my husband doesn't really like me going away on my own, but in the mornings he's at work and he's not really around. So I can, I am a little bit freer to do what I need to do and go where I need to go. Ooh, yeah, that's a great, um, great idea, Adelina. Maybe I can, I can set some meetings in the morning only for women because you know we have different different um, thoughts about any topic and related with floodings. And since most of the women stay at home, uh, I think it's going to be great to have a, a like a, a focus group uh, and only uh, all women, so you don't have to to be aware or, or worry about your husband. 
Thank you. Thank yeah, you very that would much. Be great. He doesn't really like it when I am with a group of men. He yeah, yeah. I am with a group of women. Yeah, it will. It, yeah, it can. It can work perfect. And maybe, maybe we should try that. Um, your husband, he is not too old. Maybe he can be volunteer. You know, we have a, a, a people, old people, and people with uh, any disability. Maybe your husband can help, and maybe he's going to be more aware about the floodings. Yeah, absolutely. I think the more he gets involved, the more aware he becomes and it will make it better. Okay. Oh, I see your, your kids around, Adelina. So I, I will let you go with your kids and don't worry because I know that you are a little bit uh, worried that your husband is coming. So um, thank you very much. And I will take uh, in account all the, all the ideas that you gave me. So thank you very much for the time, Adelina. Thank you. It was very special for you to come and visit me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Adelina. Bye bye. Well, Adelina gave, gave me a lot of ideas uh, to have these these different groups and, and talk about floodings and, and, and the solution. I think it was great to have Adelina. Um, let me let me go to uh, Lucia. Hi, Maria. Hi, Lucia. How are you doing? It's a long time I haven't seen you. It is. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to make supper here. Uh, the kids are <laughs> chaotic. So sorry. <laughs> Hi, don't worry, Lucia. Lucia, I, I know that everybody's this is why I'm, I am here uh, trying to visit uh, in any house, in house per house. So um, let me let me ask something, Lucia. How how are you dealing with the floods that uh, we have had lately? Oh, it's been terrible, Maria. Um, the home is a mess. I've had to do so much cleaning. Um, everything is just totally dirty. Um, and I mean, the kids. They you see, they walk through all this water to get to school. Um, it's just really terrible for the whole family. Mm, I, I see, Lucian. I know that you work uh, you work in other houses, right? So for you, maybe it's like a, a lot of more effort. Yeah, I work all day at other people's houses cleaning. And then I come home and I work all night cleaning my own house and taking care of the kids. Um, so yeah, it is just very uh, busy right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lucia and, and your husband, your husband, your husband can uh, help you uh, with cleaning or with some uh, mess that the flooding does. What happened with your husband? Uh, he's around, but he's not. He doesn't help out that much. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Maria, I have been. Uh, Maria, no. Lucia, I I have been trying to to have some meetings about uh, the flooding and how it affects, but um, no nobody came up the last time. Uh, why you didn't attend the last meeting? The you know, I, I really wanted to, but um, I just didn't know what to do with the kids. Um, you know, after work, I need to take care of them and, and make supper and help them with their homework. And, and so I just didn't really know what to do with the, with the children uh, um, during the meeting time. Yes, yes, I understand because three kids are this, they are always all around, but um, what I can do to, to have you in the meetings, because I know that you have a, a lot of experience, you are inside, and outside so you can see different things. And so I would like to have you in the meeting. So what uh, I can do and, uh, to, for you uh, to support you and, and you can go to the, you can come to the meetings. Yeah, I think if, if I had some, uh, someone to take the kids, then maybe me and my husband could come, both of us um, and if, if they weren't held during the day, you know, I have to be at work all day. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So I can't take time off to attend the meeting. So um, either in the evening or on a holiday or Sunday. Okay, um, 
Okay. That would be better. Thank you, Lucia. I, I just remember I went to I went to Sofia's house and also to Juan Carlos. And maybe Sofia, Sofia likes so much the kids, and um, she she will volunteer as a as a child care, <laughs> like a babysitter, if I can say. So maybe maybe if if, if Sofia can take care of the kids, we can make a we can make the the, the meeting and we can have you on the meeting. So this is an idea, maybe Juan Carlos as well. And Juan Carlos is, is very young and he can have all the energy for playing. So maybe maybe we can make these uh, arrangements and, and make a group of volunteers to have you in the meetings. And you also gave me the, the idea to have these meetings on the weekends. And I, I see that uh, I had this meeting with Miguel that also, uh, he works most of the time, so maybe it's a good idea to have these meetings on, on, on the weekend. Yeah, that would be great. If, if Sophia could help with childcare, that would really help out a lot. Yes, yes. And, and you know her and, and you trust on her, so maybe you will have uh, support <laughs> from others. Um, Thank you, Lucia. I know that you are preparing the soup. It smells very, very good. Um, I will uh, let you uh, keep doing your the things. <laughs> so okay. thank you very much, Lucia. See you around and thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks for visiting, Maria. Bye. Thank you. I think uh, I visit all the neighbors that I had to visit today. <laughs> Thank you very much for your insights and, and your uh, opinions and your ideas to, to improve this, uh, these meetings. And thank you for giving me so many inputs for my uh, climate and vulnerability uh, risk analysis. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Uh, was that everybody who played? Sorry, Mighty. Oh, sorry. Was that was that everyone who played? Yeah. I think everybody already played. Okay. 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 Great. Um. So the next part is to have a little bit of uh, reflection um, about the first round of the role play. You all stepped into character, including me and Patty, and we're gonna um just to have a think about um what it. What, what you learned um, about the climate risks um, for different groups of people um, from being in their shoes. So we're just navigating here. I'm showing the bottom of the mural and um, I think you all have got uh, editorial rights. So you can just like click on a, a yellow box and start writing, just start writing what comes to your mind. <laughs> and also if, if somebody wants to comment on life, um, to see the feelings and uh, how how uh, did you feel when you put in the shoes of other shoes? I will say um, one thing that uh, struck me. So I was uh, playing a lady who's a bit older than I actually am in real life, <laughs> and. Um, Sophia's story was that she was really lonely, but she was just absolutely desperate to interact with people. Um, and actually, you can turn that into, you know, like uh, opportunity, uh, you, you know, in the context of collective climate action. So um, the game made me feel uh, that there's real complementarity in the different, um, you know, kind of needs and desires and availabilities of the different characters in this game, which are probably reflected in real life. I mean, here, I, I don't live in a Latin American neighborhood like the game, but, um, you know, I live in, um, in the United Kingdom, but there's a lot of loneliness, um, you know, uh, uh, that's documented in the more elderly population, people who don't work. Um, but, you know, real desire to be active in the community. So um, that's one of my reflections. I guess I'll put it down. But others, please, please chip in what, what you thought and felt. Uh, 
Amy, you are on mute if you want to talk. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think one thing that struck me was just um, people's different uh, ways or abilities to cope. Like there was that one uh, person who talked about moving away um, and that was an opportunity that he had, whereas like others that just was not an option for them. So they just kind of were like, I'm here and I just have to deal with this situation. Whereas others were like, well, I have, I could actually move away um, and cope in that way. So just, yeah, that different like levels of access to um, or abilities to cope in different ways. Yeah, and also the different needs of people and uh, all people have different needs. So it really is a, an issue of uh, one by one. Something struck me about Juan Carlos this time that I didn't think about before, which is about how he feels politically disempowered. Because when you first look at his card, you think he's got his life ahead, he has got Every, he's young, he's strong, he's intelligent, but actually he realizes he's missing the political connections now to mobilize support from the local government and it makes him really frustrated. So the game, I guess, made me realize that and think about how someone who might have other you know, connections could really help on behalf of the group to lobby for better services. Um, I think um, one thing that I've noted from this game is that even though we have some families who've got, who have um, a mom and a dad, the relations are different. You can have two families that look similar, but the relations between the mom and the dad, um, the, 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 the responsibilities of the home and stuff. So the gender roles in between the households are different from, 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 from each and every household. Eric, can I say something? First, I forgot about Roberto. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Um, should we should play we... Roberto? Yeah, let's play. I'm, Roberto. I'm sorry, now I, that I make the list, uh, I forgot about Roberto. So, uh, and Anupama. Uh, let's try, right? <laughs> um, three. I'm going to visit Roberto this time. Um, I hope he's at home because I know that he works uh, in the city. Uh, three. Is Roberto here? Hello. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Hi, Roberto. How are you doing? Sorry, I am a little bit late. I told you that I'm going to be at 7 and now it's 7.30. So... I'm um, sorry it's to okay. be late. It's How are you okay. doing? I'm fine these days, but I'm also not fine because I have a chronic and I usually feel very low. I have oh. to work very hard. Yeah, so yeah. I understand, understand. I understand, Roberto. And also, the days are not so good. Yeah, and also you have to travel to your office and I, sometimes you feel a little bit weak. So I understand. Um, as you know, a lot of floodings uh, uh, happen uh, lately, and I trying to do a risk, uh, uh, risk and vulnerability assessment. And I I I run so many meetings, but <laughs> barely barely no one anyone came of the first meeting. So I want to know uh, why you didn't come to the the last meeting. Oh, you know, I walk um, in the city. My job is far from here. And when I come back, like I'm very busy all the time of cleaning up the mess that that has caused, the, the flood has caused in my house. So it's very difficult. And I'm so low of energy all the time. I face lots of problems. So I couldn't attend the meeting. Oh, sorry about that. And... How I can help you with this uh, problem? Maybe, and maybe I I'm I'm thinking that probably I have a group of volunteers to help you 
uh, how how I can change this situation that you cannot uh, come to the meetings? Oh, if my if I don't have fear to lose my job and if my family will support me, uh, then of course I can attend the meeting. But you know, this time when since my family had known about my disease, then they have just shown their back. They are not helping me. They are not around me. So if you could just help me uh, with the coordinations and communicating with my families. Hmm. Thank you for sharing uh, with me this, Roberto, because um, I think there are very nice neighbors uh, in, the, in the community. So maybe maybe Miguel or Juan Carlos or even Sofia, do you know Sofia? Uh, she's very caring. So maybe when you feel lonely, um, you can talk with Sofia and, and also you can be volunteer on the weekends. Uh, to help Sofia to go also to the meeting. So it's a win-win. What do you think about that? Yes, I, I also know Sofia and she's a very kind lady, but uh, I, I'm not sure whether her family or her other neighbor will uh, be okay if I'm if I go and talk with her and she's okay talking with the with the chronic disease, uh, with the patient of the chronic disease. Mm -hmm. If she's okay, then I'll be very grateful. Mm -hmm. Maybe Roberto, we can also uh, show the people that uh, you don't have uh, any any rare disease or, or you have a disease that uh, is nothing happening uh, to be with one or another person. So maybe we can inform more about your disease and how do you feeling and how you are dealing with floodings. So it's, I think it's part of the of the community, right? Yes, of course. If you could talk, then it would be a great favor for me. Mm -hmm. It would be a great help. And related to, uh, with your job, maybe because you say that you cannot like uh, uh, miss, <laughs> you cannot uh, be absent from your from your job. Uh, maybe maybe we can uh, use your talents in another way, maybe you can organize the information or, or maybe we can find different ways that you can help us. Or on the weekends or when you don't have a, to go the job, to the job. Yeah, that, that I can do that. Okay. Thank you, Roberto, so much. I think uh, uh, you are a little bit tired, so I will let you rest and I will see what I can do and to have you in the next meetings. Thank you very much, Roberto. Thank you. Thank you for visiting me. Thank you. Bye-bye, Roberto. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody, again. That's nice to have the insight of another character, isn't it? I think that the the Roberto character is sort of a classic case of um, disabilities can be hidden. You know, sometimes you don't know everything you think you know about a person when you first meet them. Yeah, it's true. And I can comment as a, like a, as a facilitator or to be in the role of Maria. And, you know, when you are like a public service uh, or, or public uh, specialist, uh, you don't normally don't have the opportunity to go and see the reality and you only have the models and you you know uh, what happened with the floodings but um, I think we don't uh, see very deeply and what the, dif the difference between uh, one person to the other and we think that everything um, works for for everybody right so for me um, for me, this is like an icebreaker or to, to break the glass <laughs> to see uh, that there are more things uh, than the models that you can do in your computer. <laughs> so, and obviously for to do the plan, the adaptation plan, you need to see all the difference and all the, 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 the different ways that you can participate and, and, and to help. Nice one. Yeah, maybe we could uh, put that in the reflections. 
um, it's about like, see, uh, seeing people's different circumstances um, beyond the, the models um, from a planner's perspective. Yeah, definitely. I think I also um, felt that the characters them were very time poor. It's like the um, officer character comes assuming you know, everyone has got time for the meeting because they have a stake. They have a stake in the, you know, uh, the health of the neighborhood and they do, but they have so many competing priorities too. Uh, how about the rest of you? What, uh, let, let's move on and think a bit more expansively about these other questions. What, what does Amy? it make you think? Yeah. Amy wants to talk. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I just kind of building off your comment, like I think in a lot of programming, we want women to be actively involved and to participate, but then it's like adding, uh, you know, another element onto their yeah. plate. So like, I guess the question is, how do we have active engagement of women while also considering that extra burden that mm -hmm. gets added and, and how do we consider that in our programming? So more a question than, than an yeah. answer, I think, but that was really highlighted. You're on mute, Miley. <laughs> but I agree, Amy, it's very uh, important what you just say because yes, like all the, the donors or all the project managers want to include more women, uh, but we don't see like the specific um, needs that they have, right? And we need to, to see how, how we can accommodate, like for example, to have these uh, uh, focal groups only for women and to have like somebody to see the kids. So, but, but yes, as I said, like sometimes you cannot see these details or these, uh, these uh, needs uh, very quick from outside. You have to go like deeply with the characters or with the, the people that is in the community. I think for me, um, the game reminds me of the importance of adaptive management. Um, you know, we talk a lot of, about in the broader CDKN training course about having a gender responsive budget. Like ideally you should have money as the planner or the project manager to pay for daycare, you know, for um, all the facilities that women need. It could be also um, facilities for nursing mothers, also the wheelchair for the people who are not very mobile. Um, ideally this would be all sort of professionalized and fully budgeted for. But I guess the reality is um, that it takes you a while to identify what those differential needs are in a certain situation. And sometimes you can't plan and budget with exact precision from the very beginning. So I think there probably has to be a degree of, um, you know, sort of staging your project so that you can uh, release resources and accommodate those different needs as you go along. But also as Maria, the character said um, in her interactions to see if there are any sort of in-kind resources, you know, that people can volunteer to give to support each other as they go along as well, which don't cost anything. Does any of you want to um, tell us a bit more about um, your project background and uh, and where you're coming from and if you've had any uh, field experiences in this, in doing this? And maybe we could talk a bit about the last question too. Um, did you get any new ideas about how to approach uh, climate change adaptation in practice? Uh, did you remark anything that you're doing already? I don't wanna dominate the conversation here. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I did. I didn't introduce myself at the beginning. Um, I'm Amy Martins. I work for an organization that uh, works in like 70 countries worldwide. Um, and I'm based in Canada. So I'm kind of an overall project co or program coordinator for disaster response. And as part of that, I'm sort of a climate change focal point within the organization. So I don't directly work in the field. We partner with um, local organizations uh, who do the field-based work. Um, and then we have in-country staff that kind of do more of a mentorship accompanying uh, process with those organizations. And I'm more like technical advice um, and coordination of funding, uh, stuff like that. Um, in terms of that question, like how to approach climate change adaptation in practice, um, I think part of the problem is that we often deal in silos, like where, um, you know, we have a food security project or we have um, like an education project or we have a project that's working on like gender equity. And so I think that part of what this has really highlighted is that our adaptation work also needs to include elements of gender transformation because we can't, um, we can't have, uh, we can't just, yeah, it's not enough just to have women participating in a project. We need to address some of these imbalance, like unbalances in like how household tasks are being distributed, for example, um, as part of a larger sort of resilience adaptation strategy. Um, so maybe that's one takeaway for me. Great, perfect. So what is your organization, Amy? It's Mennonite Central Committee. Oh, okay, yeah, great, thank you. Um, Anna Palmer, uh, if, if I might call on you, because you're, you're on my screen, how, how about um, aligning this with, with Mercy Corps' experience? Um, did you recognize some of the dynamics here and some of the solutions as well? Or do you have other sort of gender equity solutions that you've applied in field projects? Actually, um, um, telling you the truth, if um, because I had played the role of the male uh, part, so first what I felt was if um, the interviewer or if the facilitator was a male, and because I was playing the part of a chronic disease, and then I would have tell him more um, the confident and the more like you know I would have go, our conversation would have gone more deeper I, I, that that I felt and. Like even it happens in our field, like we are working in disaster and, and it's it's not a pure disaster, but it is also integrated project where we work for livelihood and we have some market as well. And we look onto the JC as well. So uh, we are, when we do the work, like when uh, that, that time, when uh, the man is known as a bread owner of the family, then uh, he's also facing the impacts of the climate change like as he as the uh, the you know the one i have played the role of the he mentioned that he have to clean the mess of the like the flood what he had what he faced in his room or his house then it also shows that the workload is not only in the women it is also for the male members if they are living alone and they are also suffering from the chronic disease because they they can't um, like they can't go and eat in, in context of like Nepalese man or Indian as if we we know a lot of India we we are very close to India so we are very similar to Indian mm. Indian and Nepalese men they they are known as the breadwinner of the family they don't cry they don't go and tell you their part of sadness to the other so that is a little bit of like patriarchal society that have created the work burden or workload in the meals as well and they cannot uh, flow their emotions and uh, so that is also what i learned like if if there was a different approach then we should think in that part as well that if there are male also who are also affected with these kind of mentality or stereotypes mm, yes yes and um uh, hello to Patty's helper. <laughs> I think we've got a, we've all got a lot of helpers <laughs> today. Um, yeah, and it can have a mental health burden on them. Actually, um, you know the the expectations of men 
uh, yeah, you know, can create pressure and also the um, lack of acceptance for them to talk about their feelings, you know, in some culture, in many cultures, actually. And um, uh, FLA, the CDK and Latin America team has done quite a lot of work on sort of um, masculinity haven't they, Patty, in the region, sort of um, concepts and expectations of masculinity and how it can be helpful for men and women to talk about that when it comes to gender roles, not, not just about femininity and, you know, what's expected of, of, of women. Um, so, no, it's good. We're, we're actually coming towards the end of our time and I know some people have had to drop off, but um, quickly now going to the uh, point of, you know, we've given you an introduction to the game, um, how, to, how to improve it. And do you think um, that you might use the game in some way, you know, uh, for your work? Just an, an open question, really. Yeah, I think like as part of my role, I do do a lot of like trainings for uh, more field based staff. And so and we've tried to do various like role playing type exercises related to uh, situation assessment or like context assessment and gender analysis. Um, so this is kind of I see this as being like another tool in our toolkit um, for for adapting, because I think it could be adapted to to be wider than just related to climate risks. Um, and it definitely is applicable in, in other situations. So um, yeah, I could see us adapting uh, this style of game for training on what sort of larger like gender analysis piece um, as part of project planning. Okay, great. Well, please do. <laughs> Feel free. <laughs> um, and uh, as we said at the beginning, you know, the, the other regional versions on, on the website as well. Um, yeah, and we have, we did a rather long version of round one of the game today. We took quite a bit of time to dive deep into it, but you can sort of use the cards for lightning, um, you know, versions as well. And if people are there in person, you can have them taking cards and moving around the room and speaking to each other and stuff. So I think we've discovered, haven't we, Patty, that, um, you, you know, it can let your imagination be your guide, really, <laughs> in, in using it different ways. Great. Um, well, that's it for me. I think I'm going to introduce the, um, the Mentimeter and the evaluation now, unless you wanted to say any wrap up while we're still in the mural, Patty, or anyone else, uh, Nona Lely, Anupama. Pardon, Mary. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go back. Uh, could you slide share, Nona Lely, the, um, the last uh, two slides of the slide pack, number 19 and number 20? just the, the closing of the session. Okay, okay. Can you use, okay. There um, we go. There we go. That's it for, uh, that's it. Okay, yeah, we've already done that. So just the last, the very last slide after that, please. Thank you so much. Um, so we just have a quick evaluation, three minutes on a uh, Mentimeter to give feedback on, on the game and the session today. And then we put all of our email addresses as well, uh, in case you want to keep in touch. So uh, I guess we'll just leave that up there on the screen um, for the next few minutes. And uh, oh yeah, thanks, Patty. There, Patty um, pasted the Menti URL there so you can click through easily from the chat box too. Please wait for the presenter to show the next slide. Perfect. And then we'll just say thank you very much for joining. It was really a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much for facilitating. Um, it's always useful just to 
to see how others facilitate sessions, especially on, like with the transition to online training. Um, so like just as a, on a personal note, that's very really, like really helpful to know how you facilitate <laughs> things online and you did great. So uh, thanks for that as well. I'm sweating here because of the weather, but also because of the facilitation online is not my experiment. <laughs> it's hard work. It's hard work, actually, isn't it? <laughs> I hope you get a glass of wine um, and can start your evening with some relaxation, Patty. <laughs> yeah. Some ice cream with Thomas and with my son. <laughs> perfect. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so okay. thank you Bye. very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Yeah. Not the lady. I think uh, the menti didn't work. Oh, did it not work? Oh. I could not, like, access, but maybe it's me. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it works. It works for me, actually. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It said, it also said, I must wait for the presenter to show the next slide. I don't know, maybe. Yes, maybe to share. In, my, in my case also, they say, please wait for the presenter to show the next slide. Oh. So I think we don't have the role. I, I think probably also only Sissy has the role. Oh, yes. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> but it's okay, we only have like two participants again. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. All I right. Did, okay, I did get um some email address from Biteka. I think it's Biteka. She did leave in the chat that she would like to hear some more information and stuff. So I did take her email address. So oh, yeah. I think, I think we will be able to at least send her the Mentimeter to get something hi so i'm also just eavesdropping on the session oh, and, hi, Cici. um so I, <laughs> <laughs> so I did make notes of the people that were in the session but also it does seem like the usefulness session the usefulness question was answered by the participants you know so i think oh. in terms of well um i can i can wing this one Yes, and I what I can do is this is download the mural and you have the notes there. So maybe it's like a mean of verification as well. Sure. Yeah, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Look, here is very warm. It's 30 degrees. <laughs> 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 and I was nervous that I was I am sweating. <laughs> I couldn't tell, Patty. You look cool as a cucumber to me. <laughs> I, and you know, I was a little bit nervous at the end because I forgot about the Roberto. I wasn't sure. I, I said, did everyone play? I, I felt like maybe we missed someone, but I couldn't figure out who it was. You know, like when you're in the moment. And yeah, no, then oh, don't I, worry. Because I had my uh, nose and then I, I went through the all the characters and I, and I see that Roberto was oh. missing. <laughs> it's okay. Everyone was super nice, eh? Yes, yes, I think they enjoy. Yes. For me, I took this as a learning, you know, because I was waiting for the person to say, I have not said anything, meaning in reality, we do have people who don't get time to be recognized. So by the virtue of us remembering that there's someone who has not participated, I felt like it meant something about us and how we do things. So I think I'm a little bit okay with us not having... Um, have we, with us having one person we forgot about, not that we forgot, but we didn't mention, and then going back to revisit the person. I think it's a learning for the person also. Yeah, yes. yeah that's true. Mm -hmm. yes. yeah, it's part of the, the facilitation as well. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, but well, that, that was nice. Okay, well, should we go have a rest? Yes. yes. <laughs> bye bye. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye bye. <laughs>